good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. I uh, just need a coffee to wake me up this morning, get me going. And I've not had any breakfast, so I'm gonna have one of these bad boys. I'm totally addicted to them now that I've come back from Wales. Toffee waffles, they call them. Terrible news though, because like four of these is the equivalent of a Big Mac. So the trick is, what you're meant to do with them, is uh, just heat them up a little bit, just like this. So we'll let uh, Kevin and Christian look after it for me for a while, and uh, we'll come back and enjoy that when the coffee's warmed it through. Cheers, boys. So yesterday we put some Fos gel on the tank that we'd welded. It's laid here still with the gel on it, and it's had all night to react with the carbonates and I've been in already with uh, a brush to see if it's had any effect and quite frankly I think it has so if I try and get a shot you see here uh, let's have a look around here you can kind of see the carbonates still on the tank particularly here look can you see that little section there but if I give it a little bit of a scrub with a brush it seems to have raised it straight off the steel so I'm hoping that it's done its job I'm going to get in here with the uh, water cannon and I'm going to rinse it all out and then I'm going to set it up with some nitrosid on a CIP which is another uh, a liquid based uh, carbonate remover and uh, we'll be able to see A, if the tank is watertight and B, if all of the carbonates come away which would be quite a result if they do. Right, I've set up today so we can actually see what we're doing in terms of welding these fittings onto the tank. So the argon is going into um, the port here which is backed off again on the inside with that uh, tin foil case if you like so any argon that goes into here is trapped in there and because it's heavier than air it's going to push the air out and the air will come out of this little hole in the top here and then once it's full of argon then of course uh, the argon will start to flow out of that hole so that means we're going to have full backing on uh, on the weld so we shouldn't have any coking. So I've got the torch set to 70 amps, but it's actually 65. We've got um, a one and a half second ramp up to 65 amps, and then we're gonna have a, a three second ramp down. So when I've finished a weld, I might change it to one and a half seconds actually, or two. Then the uh, arc doesn't just stop straight away because if it did that would cause like a little crater crack in the center of the weld so we want to ramp that temperature down slowly uh, and then I'm just going to travel around the periphery of of the seam all the way around uh, trying to get as neat a weld there as possible and then once that's done we'll flip the whole thing over I'll climb inside and I'll just reflow the inside with a lower ampage so we don't get any coking out on the back side of it and uh, that should give us a sanitary weld for the fitting. So if I just change the ramp down, there we go. So we've got two, two and a half seconds on the ramp down. And uh, there's a slight little gap here. So we'll probably tackle that first. Uh, and you'll basically see what I mean. Right, going from one side to the other keeping the rod in the puddle because there is a little bit of a gap here so by doing that oh there we go so I'm just going to pull out now so what happened there was I've got a little bit of stick out on the tip to try and get in underneath obviously the bolt here and uh, I just dipped the tip of the tungsten into the weld puddle which means I've contaminated the tungsten. It doesn't look too bad though, so I'm going to carry on. Most uh, professionals would regrind the tungsten at this point, but uh, 
I think I'll be able to get away with it. Yeah, it looks good. You see a little bit of colour in the arc, slightly green, which indicates that the tungsten is contaminated, but not enough for me to worry about. So we're starting to work around. There we go, so it ramps up, now we're at full power. We start to flow that puddle around the corner, so you're probably not be able to see much of it now. And then when I take my finger off, of the uh, button on the welding torch now, you see it took one, two, three seconds before the arc actually extinguished. I'm really pleased with that actually, that's a very good looking weld. So what I'm going to do is move the camera, bring you in a little bit closer so you can see the final stages of this and you'll be able to see what the world's looking like as we progress around. Right, so I'm hoping that's close enough. Uh, I'm going to be in a bit of a tricky position over here because I've got to get underneath these cross brace bars. Uh, but I should be able to still uh, do a decent job of... Oh, that's very tricky. I'm in here, I'm very tight. Let's go for it. The trick with TIG welding is if you're not comfortable, then chances are you're not going to produce a very neat weld. So we're just working along here slowly. I'm not in the best position, but I think I've managed to get another couple of inches onto it there. So we just keep the gas on the uh, on the weld for a couple of seconds afterwards to make sure we get the full effect of the post flow. That prevents any coking on the outside. I notice I've just missed a little bit of a crater there, so I'm just going to light back up again and uh, we'll, we'll flow that. There we go. So you see how it glows and the, uh, the post flow argon continues to flow over it while the glowing ceases. And that's what prevents the uh, whole thing turning black. I could have post flow on there a little bit longer to be honest and I've probably got the amps a little bit high looking at the colour of that. But uh, it feels good so I'm going to continue to use the settings that we've got on there. Right now this is a bit tricky because I'm kind of welding around the corner now. Ah, let's have a look. Yeah, not ideal. Again. But I think I can wing it. Just slow and steady wins the race. I'm going to get with that one. Pull my head out of the tank again. Out of my arse. And I'm going to have to weld from a distance now. That's fine. I've got a good view of the whole bit in. Making sure I've got plenty. Right, there we go. Just made a little mistake there, and we've popped a little hole in. I'm going to go in and just quickly prepare that. That's because I'm not feeding enough rod. And the uh, torch is slightly restricted. So I'm going to change the position of the torch and hopefully we'll be able to come around the other side now and start to finish this weld off.
Yeah, very tricky. Very tricky indeed. Let me just reposition the torch yet again. I'm gonna have to come over the top of the tank this time. Just a complete repositioning. There we go, hit the camera while I'm at it. Okay. So let's see if we can get in now. That looks better. The key is if you do blow through, then a little hole in the tank or in the steel, don't panic. Just either uh, concentrate on the thickest part of the metal and try and flow a bit of rod in or just extinguish your arc and uh, you come back to it right I can see I'm struggling again to get the torch angle that I want here Yeah, this is very tricky indeed. This is top section. There we go, and I think I've just achieved the joint. So I think that is it all the way around so I hope I've caught that on camera because that's probably going to make up a good part of today's vlog so yeah unfortunately we're not very well focused there because of the light but there you go you can see that's what the wild looks like on the outside so now I'm going to go on the inside and uh, we will reflow that seam and see if we can't get it sanitary and then we'll put some pickling paste on and have a final look at how bright the pickling paste brings the weld once it takes all of the oxidation away. So before I go inside the tank and um, backflow this pipe work, I just want to show you one thing that we've got going on here. Uh, I had to cut off like a little bit of pipe work that was poking out of the side of the tank. I don't know where it is, it's on the floor here. So we had this pipe, I imagine it was some type of sight glass that they had going on for it or something like that so in order to be able to fill this hole up or patch it without making a real mess on the inside I've backed it with some copper you might just be able to see in there and the way I've got that against the side of the panel is with a spreader which is like a quick grip spreader and then up there this is the contraption that I used to back the other tanks that we made to uh, prevent coking on the inside so if you can't get argon to the back side of a uh, of a weld let's say it's uh, just open and uh, not feasible to do it you can back it with another metal like aluminium or copper and it won't weld to it but it will keep the air off so you don't get any oxidation and the argon that you're putting out at the end of your torch will be sufficient to purge it until you've obviously filled the hole so this backing bar is a piece of timber, then a piece of 3mm uh, aluminium and then that's covered in a flattened out 22mm um, plumber's copper pipe essentially and that sits on there, um, it's like sort of almost spring loaded so when I tighten the quick grip up it presses firmly against the side of the tank and takes the form of the, uh, the roundness, what's the correct word? you know what I mean so I'll be able to get the torch on the outside and just patch this little hole up no problem so in order to achieve a little bit more control over this weld we've now reverted to the foot pedal which is there so if I just set you up as close as possible to that said hole I'll be able to pull oh dear it's dropping everything on the floor pull myself in put my gloves on, get the filler rod and the torch and just set about patching this hole up nice and slow
And there we have it. And then I just like to give it an extra bit of a blast with the argon to make sure it's well shielded. And once we've hit that with the flapper disc, that'll be lovely and level and, uh, well, patched. Absolutely blitzed it folks. I've absolutely blitzed it. So uh, all five tanks I've just washed all the uh, pickling paste off my body because I've been in the tanks, but yeah all five tanks are done Oh, I'm hooked on the tripod. Let's go and check it out Look at the mess As you can see it looks like someone's been in and trashed the place, but no 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 we have in fact got all the fittings welded on and everything's got the pickling paste on all the welds to treat them. We've been inside. This is the one that had the Fos gel. Now it's dried, you can see that uh, yeah, it didn't really get rid of all of it. It's lifted patches, but I think we need to try the nitrosid. Down there is the port with the pickling paste on. And uh, I've given everything a bit of a treatment, even like these pissing in the wind cooling jackets. I just thought I'd hit them with it. I know it's going to be underneath, underneath the uh, cladding, but if you look, they've actually come up quite nicely. So whoever's welded these, after they've done it for about, I don't know, five or six meters, they seem to get the knack. And then over here, as you can see, I pulled the uh, table saw bench out. That's the good thing about popping it on these little casters. But yeah, over here, these are all the fittings that we uh, welded up the other day. And as you can see, they've come up absolutely wonderfully. Look at that, perfect. So inside and out, these little beauties are gonna be perfect. They're gonna serve a purpose, absolutely. So, just gotta wait for the pickling paste to do its job on these tanks and then I'm going to wash them off, stand them all up and then we will start the CIP process. But wow, yeah, job done. We've just got five new tanks that are ready to be clad. Result.
I think picking them bad boys up uh, makes me exempt from going for a run today. I've definitely not skipped arm and leg day, have I? Let's face it. They are freaking heavy. Particularly the ones with the thicker band on top. You know that you're lifting a little bit of extra steel. So uh, thankfully I got them all upright without any issue. So what I'm going to do now is uh, pop on all the fittings. Uh, put them all into their correct positions. And uh, then I'm going to dose one of them with the nitrosid. And we're going to recirculate it with the cleaning pump. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll give it a little bit of time. Um, and then probably drain it and uh, instead of recycling the acid because I think it will probably be spent considering the amount of carbon that's inside these tanks then, uh, then we'll just have to refill and recirculate um, but yeah first time me using this particular chemical because I rinse all my tanks with Persid before they're used anyway so they kind of get a pacification treatment and of course uh, the the Persid is an acid which will get rid of any base stone and our water is not hard around here uh, not as hard as obviously what it was Liverpool way on where these tanks came from originally so I don't have a big issue with lime scale um, so I don't want to inherit someone else's so let's see if we can get it shifted well I think I'm about to wrap up folks I didn't manage to get any acid in the tanks because what I did was went to fit all the pipe fittings like the um, the valves and the elbows and I noticed that I'd not put the off shot on the um, dip tubes so that shows you obviously where the dip tube is in the tank pointing down so I didn't really have any proper bar for this so I had to cut up a bit of scrap that I had from making the legs on the other tanks so I had to repurge the inside of these pipes and uh, and just weld these on. It's gone to plan though, I'm pleased with it. Uh, so everything's pretty much in situ now. I am however short some two inch nuts. I thought I'd ordered enough, but looking at it, I need another two for the top. I need another five for the outlets here, if I'm gonna put blanking nuts on them. I probably won't. And then I also need to uh, modify the um, the yeast valve if you like so this is for taking the yeast and what have you through the sight glass out the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the tanks so we've got a diaphragm valve here a sight glass here so we can see what's coming through um, and then it's onto a, a male RJT which is fine it will go onto this female to female well, it's a male-to-male -male adapter, this one. It's got two female ends to it. But I don't have any uh, female-to-males or uh, straight or elbow adapters. So I'm going to make a few of those up. So I'll probably pop a little order into GC. Not cost me too much. I'll probably get a couple of packs of the 2-inch RJTs. Um, I've got loads of nuts and liners over here at the side of this pallet of bottles so I don't think I need to order any more I've got an elbow here not an elbow a T there's another T so what I'll probably do is order a couple of elbows uh, I've got blanks there blanks there and uh, yeah, they're, they're two inch blanks. I thought I had a bag full of liners and nuts as well in here somewhere. I could have been hallucinating. Ah, oh, well, there we go, look. Liners, at least. One, two, three, four. There's four liners in there. And I know I've got some others, like, randomly on just pieces of components that I've chopped up to harvest. Oh, I'll get past this stuff. So, bloody hell. So I'll, uh, I'm not in a rush to get that. I've got everything I need for those tanks to be CIP'd and functioning. Uh, I just think it's nice to have everything to hand. So a couple of male to female adapters, you know, uh, RJT to BSP adapters, all that kind of stuff. We'll probably put some of those together in the future when I get time. 
Uh, but today I am out of time and uh, my mum, the old queen, is sat in the beer garden having a fag. I keep telling her to pack up, she won't. Uh, because she wants to come up and see the kids with me this afternoon or this evening, should I say. It's approaching 6, 6.30. So that's what I'm going to do. I bid ye adieu, my friends, and I will see you on tomorrow's vlog where we will definitely get some acid into these tanks and hopefully the blocks will come for the canopy. We'll get that up if they do, and maybe even the steel for the railings. So there are a few jobs that we can crack off the list provided things arrive. See you then. The old queen has come to eat us out of house and home. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable, eh? Hey? You're going straight to your bedroom when you get home. You do understand that, don't you? I do. And I was told. Yeah, well, these two don't.